Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another PS4 tutorial. So I've been revisiting a few of the exploit methods that we've covered previously on the channel for running the PP Pwn exploit on the PS4 to see how they have evolved over time, adding new features and making the installation process much easier. Now, one of my favorite methods here was the ability to run the exploit on an LG TV. If you're using your TV anyway to display the console, why not also use that TV to run the jailbreak? It's pretty convenient. You can have it so that when you turn on the TV, it automatically runs the jailbreak after a few seconds. Or you can also set it so you can just press a button on your remote control and it will run the jailbreak when you press that button. And that's it. You just wait for a notification to pop up once it's finished jailbreaking and it will have jailbroken your PS4 for you. So we're covering this again because the project has been updated to make the installation process a lot easier where it's all done with the menus on the TV itself instead of having to use uh, you know, SSH and run scripts manually with the terminal. None of that is required anymore, which makes this process a lot easier. So here we have the project on GitHub, PPLG Pwn, a method of executing Pwn through rooted LG TVs. So your TV does need to be rooted for this. I'll show you how to do that because it is a pretty straightforward process. We can use this Deja vulnerability to root your TV. Now you do need to have a compatible TV, which are TVs no earlier than 2017 models. So from 2017 to 2023 model TVs are compatible with this vulnerability. Anything higher is already patched and your TV needs to not have been updated. If you do have a compatible model like a 2022 or 2023 model TV, you do want to make sure it's not been updated to the latest webOS version because that will also have likely patched the vulnerability. So providing you meet those requirements, you'll be able to install this. All you need to do is grab a USB drive, plug it in to your computer, download the vulnerability here, Deja vulnerability auto root, open up that zip file. And what we're going to do is get a USB drive here, right click and go to format. Just make sure it's in either FAT32 or NTFS format. So once we've done that, we can go ahead and enter our USB drive and extract the files for the vulnerability into the root of the USB drive from this point we can just unplug that USB and plug it back into our TV. So on the TV itself, we're gonna hit the home button and head over to the media player. And then from there, we're gonna select the USB drive, go into the first folder, go into the TMP folder, the temporary folder. And then we're gonna select the MP3 file that's in here and play that with the media player. And that's going to run the vulnerability. You should get some messages popping up on the TV showing that the vulnerability is running. And once it runs successfully, it will ask you to reboot the TV. You're just going to select the option to reboot and once the tv reboots successfully if you go back into the home menu again you should now see a new application showing up on the home menu which is the homebrew channel and that means that you have successfully rooted the tv if it didn't install the homebrew channel you might want to just try and run the mp3 file again a few times in the media player until it works it can take a few attempts but if it's still not installing the homebrew channel, it's probably because your TV is not compatible with the exploit, unfortunately. But anyway, if you have the homebrew channel installed, then you are pretty much good to go. So from there, we can go ahead and get connected up to the network. So we're going to head into the settings and then we're going to head down to the general settings. We're going to go down to network and then from network, we're going to go ahead and get connected up to the Internet using Wi-Fi. So select the Wi-Fi connection and turn that on and make sure you are connected up to your Wi-Fi network. So once you're connected up to the network, we can head back into the home menu again and then run the homebrew channel. Then from the homebrew channel, we're going to want to head to the settings cog in the top right hand corner. And then from there, we're just going to make sure that the block system updates is enabled so that you don't accidentally install a new update on the TV that could patch the TV jailbreak or root uh, that you currently have. Okay, so now that we have the TV rooted, we can now set up the PP Pwn exploit for the PS4 on the TV itself. So in order to do this, we're going to go ahead and plug in our USB drive back into our computer. And what we're going to do now is delete all of the files in the USB drive. And now we're going to go over to our uh, PPLG Pwn project and go to the releases section, grab the latest release here, download the zip file and open it up. And then from here, what we're going to do is, again, take the files here on the zip file and extract them to the root of the USB drive. Now, there is actually an issue with one of the file paths in this script, which is set incorrectly, it appears. So I have made a pull request, but it's not been merged yet. So uh, what you can do in the meantime is just use my fork of the project here. 
uh, which I will leave linked in the description and just download the one that says fix startup path issue. So just download this particular version of the script here. And then once you've got that downloaded, just copy that into the root of the USB drive and override the one that is already in there. Okay, so that shouldn't be required in future once the script is merged or this path issue has been fixed in the main project. But for now, anyway, you can do that to get that updated version of the script on there. So from here, all we need to do is eject our USB drive and do the same thing again, plug it into the TV. And then once again, from the TV, we're gonna go ahead and go to the media player. And again, we're just gonna go into the USB drive, select the folder. There's two files here now. There's an image file and an MP3 file. You can run either one of them to trigger the install script. I'm just gonna go ahead and run the MP3 file. But again, make sure that your TV is connected to the internet here so it can download all of the necessary files. So when we load the MP3 file this time, you'll see it'll now run the pppone installer for our PS4. And we can now just use the menu on the TV to select our options for configuring the setup script. So the first prompt we'll get is asking what we're loading on the PS4, whether it's going to be Gold Hen or Hen VTX or something else. So in this case, of course, we're going to be loading Gold Hen. So I'm going to select Gold Hen and then we just wait for it to download all of the necessary files. The next prompt we'll get will ask us what firmware version our PS4 is on to load the correct version of Pwn for our firmware. So of course I'm on 11.0, so I'm gonna select the 11.0 firmware option. So select your firmware, and then it will download stage one and stage two. So the final prompt will ask you if you want to load the exploit on TV startup. And that is what the project is really designed for. It's designed to be loaded on the startup of the TV. So generally you're gonna to want to say yes to this. So every time you turn the TV on, it will load the jailbreak which isn't really a problem even if you're not trying to jailbreak the PS4 at the time because it will just run in the background waiting for the PS4 connection. So if you don't have the PS4 connected, it's not really going to be cause any issues. The only problem though is you will get a message on screen saying that it's running the jailbreak every time you turn the TV on. So I will show you an alternative method that I prefer which allows you to use the remote control uh, to just trigger the exploit whenever you press a button on the remote. So we'll configure that uh, afterwards but we'll just set up using the default settings just now which is to load the exploit on TV startup so I'll say yes to that and then we should be all good so at this point it will count down three two one and then it will load the jailbreak so once it starts running the jailbreak we're going to unplug the USB drive now because if you keep it plugged in and the jailbreak succeeds it will then rerun the install script again um, so that you know if you want to change the settings you can just rerun the install script again by letting uh, the script run to completion and jailbreak the PS4 with the USB drive still plugged in and then it will run the install script again. But if you don't want to run the install script again after jailbreaking, make sure you unplug the USB drive at this point. So to set things up on the PS4, we need to plug in the Ethernet cable between the TV and the PS4 itself. Then on the PS4, we go into our network settings. We set up an internet connection using a LAN cable, using custom and then setting PPPoE as the network type. And then from there, we can just enter a random user ID and password and then click next and then just use automatic, automatic and do not use proxy. And then that should be all the settings set up there. And of course, if you are loading the jailbreak for the first time, you will need to grab yourself a USB drive and copy the gold hen payload to the root of the USB drive and plug that into your PS4's USB port when you load the exploit for the first time. And then once it's loaded for the first time, it will copy uh, the gold hen payload over to the hard drive so it can be loaded from the hard drive of the ps4 on subsequent attempts uh, which means you only need to use the usb drive for the first boot so when we plug in the ps4 to the tv you will see it will get wired connection is now established and at this point it will start trying to run the jailbreak and you'll see that the ip address will eventually change to 42 42 42 42 which means it is successfully running the jailbreak you can trigger it faster by testing the internet connection on your PS4 and if it establishes an IP address then that means it is running the jailbreak and then you just wait for it to load. Of course it will disconnect on a failed attempt and then reconnect again and it will keep doing that until it eventually loads the jailbreak successfully and then as you can see here we eventually get it to load uh, with the Gold Hen 2.4 B18 and we've got the jailbreak up and running on our PS4. So that is how it works after running the install script. Now, in order to trigger this again, if I reboot the PS4, so we reset it back to stock again, where we're not running the jailbreak anymore. So at this point, all we do is turn off the TV and then leave it off for a few seconds. 
And then once we've done that, we can turn it back on again with the power button and it should start trying to run the jailbreak. Now, it will take a few seconds after turning the TV on for it to run the jailbreak. It has to wait for everything else to start up and be loaded and then it will load the jailbreak script afterwards. So it may take, you know, 10, 20 seconds after turning the TV on before you get the notification on the TV saying it's starting to run the jailbreak. But as you can see here, it's now showing up and it's now trying to run the jailbreak on the PS4. So that is how that works. Now, if it doesn't run the script on startup, it's probably because you have something called Quick Start Plus enabled on the TV, which is a mode that basically prevents the TV from shutting down properly, uh, which allows it to kind of turn on faster uh, whenever you turn it on. But it means that the startup script does not run every time you turn it on because it's already still running in the background, I guess, uh, with Quick Start Plus. So you'll need to disable that in order to get the run on startup for the script working. Uh, which you can do by going into the settings, going to the general settings, devices, TV management, and then in there you'll find Quick Start Plus, and you just want to make sure that is disabled. And then when you turn the TV off, wait a few seconds, turn it back on. Uh, after a few seconds of turning it back on, it should start running the exploit script. Although I think the other method of just using a button on the controller is better, although it does require a little bit more setup. But I'm going to show you guys how to do that here in this video, because it is my preferred method. So for the second method, when you run the install script and you can rerun the install script again with the media player with the USB drive plugged in to change the settings. But when we run the install script, this time we're not going to say yes at the last prompt to run on startup. We're going to say no, thank you. We're not going to run the exploit on the TV startup. So that is what we're going to select in this case. And then what we're going to do is we're going to head into the homebrew channel on our TV. And there's an app in the homebrew channel called LG Input Hook and we're going to select that and install that application. So get that installed on your TV. Once it's installed, it will be accessible from the home menu. So select the option in the home menu to open it. Make sure your TV is still connected to the network when you do this. And once you are connected here, you can see that we get a IP address in the top left hand corner saying that you can access this from another device using 192.168.1.23 uh, colon 1842. And then there's also a password there as well. So all we need to do on our computer that's connected to the same network is go to that IP address that was showing up there in LG input hook with colon 1842. It will then prompt you for the password. So you enter the password that was also there uh, on the LG input hook page. So with that, you can then remote access this application. So from here, what we want to do is go to the view logs section and we want to set this to LG Input 2, LG Magic Remote. If I select that option, you can see I get all of the logs for my remote control. So what you're looking for is in the logs, whenever you press a button on the remote, you should get a new log showing up. So every time I'm pressing a button here, the log is popping up here. So that is what you're looking for. So if that doesn't happen on LG Input 2, LG Magic Remote, try one of these other versions to see if you get the actual log popping up. But for me, it's in LG Input 2. So what we want to do here is find a button that we want to use on the Magic Remote to actually trigger the exploit. In my case, for whatever reason, I like to use Channel 7, the Channel 7 button to trigger the exploit. So whenever I press the Channel 7 button in the logs, it's showing up with an ID number of 8. So what we're going to do is add a keybind. We're going to select the ID as 8, which is Channel 7 for me. And then we're going to change the action to Execute to execute the script. Now I'll put the command in the description so you can just copy and paste it. You don't have to type it out. That should be it right there. So at this point, we can go ahead and just click Save Changes. And now what we'll notice here is whenever I press the 7 button on my controller here, it pops up executing CD, media, blah, 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 the whole command. And it is now running the jailbreak because I got the notification on the TV. So the reason why I prefer this to the startup method is simply that whenever you turn the TV on, you're not necessarily wanting to run the jailbreak and that notification pops up every time you turn the TV on. Not only that, but it does take a few seconds to actually enable. So, you know, if you turn the TV on, you're trying to jailbreak the, the PS4. It takes, you know, 10 to 20 seconds before the notification pops up, at least for me. I guess it depends on the speed of your TV, the processor that's in it and so forth. But generally for me, it takes a while. So I much prefer this method where you can just press a button on the remote. That way, when I turn the TV on, it's not running the jailbreak. It's only run, running the jailbreak when I press uh, channel 7 on my magic remote and then it will run so that is my preferred method and as you can see here 
it's working just fine. It's running the jailbreak. So the big advantage of this version is, of course, it supports more firmwares, Hen VTX. You can now install it just by using that install script and using the remote control to select your firmware version and, you know, whether you want to run on startup, uh, whether you want to load Gold Hen or Hen VTX. That's all done through the menus on the TV itself instead of having to what we had to do previously, which was actually SSH remotely into the TV and then use the terminal to run the scripts. Uh, which obviously is a little bit more of a headache. So pretty big improvements there. Hopefully we might see maybe another option to be able to disable the script with the remote at some point, and perhaps also things like internet pass-through that we have on other devices uh, that could also be implemented. But anyway, that's it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video.